Hi folks, what I've got here is the Lionel 120th Anniversary Deluxe F3 Freight Set and we're going to check it out right now on Eric's Trains. So 2020 marked the 120th anniversary for Lionel, and to celebrate that anniversary in the 2020 Volume 1 catalog, Lionel offered several anniversary themed items, including a really nice Vision Line GS series locomotive with passenger cars. I did not get that, but I did get this one, the 120th anniversary deluxe F3 freight set, which is sort of a post-war inspired F3 set that harkens back to Lionel's heyday in the 1950s. Now these sets began arriving at dealers in late 2020, and in fact on the box you can see an OBS date of 10-22-2020. Anyway, let's go ahead and crack this thing open and have a look, and for today's unboxing, we'll be using my Condor Primitive Mountain Knife. Kind of an interesting, cool looking knife. There it is. So, let's go ahead and break the seal. Now, you may wonder why I'm unboxing this in my garage workshop rather than on the layout, but the reason for that will be clear in just a moment. All right, and there we go. Wow, the top of the set box looks fantastic. Let's get it all the way out. Wow, that looks amazing. They did a great job on the set box. Line Chief Plus 2.0, and it's got Bluetooth. And there's the side of the box with all the specs, so you can pause and read that if you want to. And on this side it says, included in the Lionel 120th Anniversary Deluxe F3 set is a Santa Fe powered F3A unit, a Santa Fe non-powered F3A unit, a Lionel operating milk car with platform, a Sunoco triple dome tank car, a Lionel auto loader with cars, a Lionel Lines log dump car, and a Lionel Lines caboose. Now, unlike most other Lionel set boxes, you can't just lift up the top, you actually have to open it up from the side. Boy, they don't make these sets easy to unbox on camera, that's for sure. So let's see what we've got here. This is the non-powered F3A unit. And we've got, I'm assuming this is the powered F3A unit. Yep. This is cool. Got the instructions, a personal invitation to join the LCCA. And is this the instructions or, nope, it's a catalog, cool. It's a little miniature catalog. All right, and here is the operating milk car with platform. And this car is the main reason I'm reviewing this set in my garage workshop and not on my layout because in order to use the milk car, you need to use the platform. And because my layout has permanently ballasted track, it wouldn't be easy for me to add the platform onto my layout. Whereas in the garage workshop here, I can put it on my test track on the table and we can use fast track with the platform and everything will work as it should. Nice box. All right, and here is the Lionel Lines caboose. Mm -hmm. And here's the Sunoco triple dome tank car, post-war classic. And here's the Lionel Lines log dump car. And then finally, the auto loader with cars, which is another post-war classic. In fact, all of these items are post-war classics. That's why they're in the set. All right, we got a nice little pile of stuff here. Let's go ahead and check out the locomotives first. All right, so there's the end of the box of the powered A unit. Lionel 120th Anniversary Deluxe Line Chief Plus 2.0 Santa Fe F3. That's a mouthful. Powered F3A, TMCC and Bluetooth control, rail sounds, fan driven smoke unit, and 031 minimum curve. Let's 
It's not a styrofoam box. It's kind of cool. There we go. That is a beautiful model. Post-war style, of course, but gorgeous nonetheless. Very nice. And there's the tag on the non-powered unit. So I think there's an outer plastic container as well that's kind of tucked in there. Yeah, there we go. I missed that on the first box. Got a little pipette for the smoke unit. And there's the non-powered unit, which is going to be lighted and does have a smoke unit. So it does have some functionality, it just doesn't have any motors. But it does have a run program switch. Nice. Alright, now let's check out some of the post-war inspired rolling stock. Starting with the autoloader car. There it is. It's got four cars, die cast metal sprung trucks and couplers. And if you didn't already know that this was inspired by the original post-war auto loader, well, these cars should clue you in. They're definitely not modern style cars. <laughs> Up next, we've got the log dump car. So here's the car. Put your logs up on there and bada bing, they dump out. Very cool. And here are the logs. Looks like they've got five logs total. Nice little real wood logs made from the finest Chinese trees, I'm sure. And yeah, this set is made in China. Everything's made in China these days. Get over it. All right, now we've got the Triple Dome Sunoco tank car. These were ubiquitous in the post-war period. There it is. Looks nice. It looks like a post-war Sunoco Triple Dome tank car. <laughs> and that's a good thing. And now we've got the Lionel Lines caboose. Very nice. Very, very nice. Built in 2020 by Lionel. And finally, we've got the classic, the operating milk car with platform one of the most legendary cars from the post-war period, without a doubt. And this is a box that pops up like that. Very nice. So you can see we've got the milk car and then the metal platform that the milk cans come out onto. And the platform has to be metal because the milk cans are magnetic. At least they were on the original. And they still are. Here are the milk cans. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven milk cans. And there's a close-up. They look really nice. They look much better than the originals, which were just plain metal. These have white sides and a red top. 
and the only exposed metal is the magnet on the bottom. So I'd say that's a marked improvement. All right, let's see if I can get this out of here. Oh, it's taped shut. All right, there's the instructions. And there we are. It's got a nice weight to it. I assume the hatch is still in the top. Yep. So there's the little hatch where you load the milk cans. And then they come out of here when the car is activated. Very nice. And you'll see this in action in just a few minutes. And here's the classic platform, all metal, with a nice mirror finish bare metal on top. Very cool. All right, so there it all is out of the box. It looks great. Now, of course, the set doesn't include any track, but fortunately, I've got plenty of Lionel Fast Track to spare. So let's go ahead and get this on the test loop here in my garage workshop. So the F3A diesels, I think these look fantastic. Lionel did a great job on them. They are reasonable facsimiles of the post-war originals, although of course they're not exactly the same because a lot has changed over the years. And actually I think these look better than the originals because they have more detail. I like these tinted porthole windows as opposed to the clear inserts on the originals. The paint job is fantastic. You've got some see-through screens up on top. So in every respect, this thing looks awesome. Here's a better look at that top. You can see the see-through metal screens. We've got these add-on lift rings. The horns are add-on metal pieces. The fans back here are molded into the plastic. And then we've got these two smokestacks that go down to the fan-driven smoke unit. The lead unit is powered by two motors. The rear unit has no motors, but it still has lighting and a fan-driven smoke unit. And both units can be programmed into your TMCC or Legacy system. And they also both have Bluetooth on board for the Lionel, Lion Chief app and stuff like that. Here's that operating milk car again. It looks fantastic and it's totally rocking the post-war charm. And by the way, in case I didn't already mention this, every piece in this set has die-cast metal trucks and couplers. On every other piece of rolling stock except the milk car, the trucks are also sprung, but for whatever reason on the milk car, the springs are cast into the metal. And then of course on the diesels, those have die cast metal truck side frames, fuel tanks, pilots, and couplers. Here's that Evans auto loader car again, just oozing post-war goodness. This thing looks great. The dump car is looking good, and we'll see this in operation in just a moment. That's what this little tray is for. The Sunoco tank car is gorgeous as always. And then of course, bringing up the rear, we've got the classic Lionel Pensy style porthole window caboose. And if I didn't mention it before, the caboose does have a lighted interior. All right, so now we're gonna power this thing up. And because this is a Lion Chief Plus 2.0 set, there are five ways to run this thing. So you can use Legacy or TMCC. Now to be clear, this thing is equipped with TMCC, not Legacy. It doesn't have all the advanced stuff that Legacy has. It's got basic TMCC control. But because Legacy and TMCC are compatible with each other, they're basically the same system, just one has more features, you can run this set with either your Legacy or TMCC system. Because this set has Bluetooth on board, that gives you two more operating methods. You can use the Lion Chief app on your smartphone or tablet, which is what I'm going to be doing today day or you can use the Lion Chief Universal Remote. And then finally, you can operate this set conventionally just like your granddad used to do with nothing more than a transformer and some track. All right, I've got power on the track. And by the way, you're gonna see the new Lionel lighted fast track in operation today. This is their Christmas lighting fast track. But I'm gonna pull up the Lion Chief app on my smartphone. And then there's the engine.
looks like I lost some logs when this thing was at maximum speed. <laughs> That's not a surprise. just like the original, just as finicky and just as charming. I mean, that's the thing about those old post-war accessories. They were great when they worked correctly, but oftentimes they were very finicky. That's the way it is when you have electromechanical accessories rather than digitally controlled accessories like we have nowadays. Now, I don't know if Lionel has done this before, but it'd be pretty cool if they came out with a legacy controlled milk car. That would be something neat. Unfortunately, it's a different story with the log car. Let me go ahead and turn down the volume of the engine so you can hear me better. And I'll turn off the smoke as well. Okay, so I've got the log car on top of the fast track control section and the electromagnet in the middle that is used to uncouple cars and activate the dump feature is right under the plunger. But as you can see, when I activate it, nothing happens. Now, the electromagnet is working, you can hear it, it's just not pulling the plunger. And why is that? Well, it's because there's not enough of a gap between the electromagnet and the plunger. There's just the tiniest of gaps right now, and that's not enough space for the electromagnet to pull the plunger far enough to activate the dump feature. Now, to illustrate what I'm talking about, let me lift this car up just a tiny bit and then activate it. And you can see, now it works just fine. So there's nothing wrong with the dump car, it works just fine. And there's technically nothing wrong with the fast track control section because the electromagnet is working just fine. And by the way, I tried this with three different fast track control sections and they all had the same issue. So it's not like I have one bad piece of fast track. I think it's more about the interaction between these two products. But you know, because this car was designed back when Lionel was using their classic tubular track system, I'm willing to bet that if we use this car with a classic Lionel control track, it'll work just fine. You know, let's go ahead and test that theory. I've got a classic Lionel control track here. So let's put our log bin down here. And then we will put our log car on this classic control track. There we go. And let's load it with some logs. All right, let's power up the track and see if this works. Yep, works just fine. So if you want to use this car, just make sure you have one of the classic control sections. That's really what these cars were designed to be used with because this design predates Fast Track by a long time, so you're better off using it with one of these. And you can still buy these today. And if you're using Fast Track, you can actually buy adapter pieces to go from Fast Track to one of these and then back to Fast Track. So that's what I would do is use one of these. Now, of course, I could probably fix the issue by filing down the plunger on the dump car, thereby making it a little thinner and increasing the size of the gap between the plunger and the electromagnet, but I don't want to alter this car, and so if I'm going to use this, I'll just use it with the classic control track instead.
right, so there you have it, the Lionel 120th Anniversary Deluxe Lion Chief Plus 2.0 F3 set. So if you're interested in getting one of these, the retail price is right at $1,000, $999.99. But keep in mind that if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a little bit of a discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www.legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And don't forget that Patreon supporters get all sorts of nice little perks and benefits, and you can read about those on my Patreon page. And lastly, if you want to buy an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at ericstrains.com store. Anyway, that about does it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cast metal sprung trucks and couplers. Oops. <laughs>